Hey there, welcome to day four. In this one, we are gonna be going through iteration and loops. Now, it's so often that you're gonna to wanna to go through a bunch of data. You're gonna to wanna to loop through it. You're gonna to wanna to go through each individual item in something. So to do this, we use something called a loop. We loop through this data, and each time we loop through it, we iterate over what that data is. We'll see what this does in just a moment. But the first thing I wanna do is actually grab a list item from before. So I'll go ahead and say my list equals to one, two, three, four, five. And I wanna get every single number in there. Now, one way to do it is by using that index item, remember? So if I did my list zero, I can grab that one, and then one, and then two, three, and then four, right? So it gives me each position number, I actually am able to get the value that's in there. Now, I just did a manual iteration. I looped through that entire list, grabbed that index number, and displayed it. Obviously, you can do this automatically, and that's called a for loop. There's other ways to do loops, which we'll get into, but a for loop, you just type out four, and then you give it a variable, so my var, in, and then my list. Okay, so the two things that are built into Python are for and in, and then also this colon at the end, right? The other parts are things that I have declared myself, as in I came up with them. My list is a variable that I set up here. My var is a variable that I'm setting just inside of this for loop. I'll show you what that is in just a second. But now I, I go ahead and press enter, and notice that I have these three little dots here. That means that I can continue my statement going forward. And whenever you continue a statement in Python, you have to use spaces. So we go one, two, three, four. Python is crazy about spaces. That's like one of the things that is really cool about it and one of the things that's really frustrating about it. So you'll see what that means in just a moment. I'm gonna show you a spacing error in just a moment. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and print out my var. Okay, so I've got all of those same numbers printed out and it does it very, very quickly. And all it did was iterate through this entire list. It went one by one in the order it was set up and it printed those things out. Now, when I said that my var only works in this for loop, that means that down here, if I try to say my var, it actually gives me the very last one. And that's because I actually did set it and I set it very at the very end. This actually didn't use to work in Python. This is a feature that's a newer version of Python and perhaps it'll change in the future. But for now, just understand that that variable will be set to the very last list item or the last one in that iteration. So that's pretty cool. Now we can also iterate through other items. It doesn't have to be a list. So let's go ahead and say for I in, let's say ABC. Oftentimes what you'll see is, you'll see like a single letter variable like that, right? So whenever you see single letter variables, it's a little bit easier to work with than having to retype out a longer variable. But by and large, you wanna make these for loops pretty descriptive, right? You wanna make sure that when you're looping through something, it makes sense. We will get into more of that in just a little bit. Now, before we do, let's go ahead and print out I and I get an indentation error. This is all about that spacing. This is a spacing problem right here. Whenever you see an indentation error, that means somewhere in there your spacing doesn't exactly line up. So let's go ahead and try this again. I'll say for I in ABC. This time I'll add some spaces. You wanna do four spaces. I'm gonna go ahead and print out I. I'm gonna do one more spacing error and I'm gonna print out I again. Now notice that these are not lined up to each other. That means that we're gonna get another indentation error. So we hit enter. That's where Python really starts to get a little frustrating is that you get, there's just this one little space and hey, it's not the correct one. So in order for that to work, we have to just do print i. It just has to be all in the same line as in the same number of spaces have to come before it. And that's the only way you can print it multiple times in that way. Now, of course, printing is a very simple function that Python has. There's gonna be a lot more things that we'll be able to do when we actually loop through things. So we actually learned a couple things here. We learned the spacing issue, but we also learned that 
strings can also be iterated through. You can actually loop through a string because if you remember back to when we were doing the lists, we can also get a actual index value for something in a string just like you can with a list. So what about numbers? What if I actually wanted to iterate through numbers? Let's go ahead and move this down a little bit and get us some space here. I'm gonna go ahead and say 4x in 10. And then I'm gonna go ahead and print x. Now, generally speaking, I'm like, hey, I wanna get every number up till 10. I wanna get zero to 10. And I'm hoping that something like this will work. So let's go ahead and hit x. And you get this type error, right? An integer object, an int object is not iterable. It means it can't loop it. You can't loop through a number. Numbers don't have anything to loop through. A string does, it kind of makes sense, right? If you have a long string of characters, that means that there's a number of characters that you can actually go one by one and see each one of those characters. A number doesn't have that. Now, of course, if a number was a string, you'd be able to do it, which I mean by that is if I turn this into 4x in 10, and then printed x, it's gonna give me each number that's in there that's one and zero, right? So now it has things to iterate from, but remembering back, Python treats numbers literally. It treats a number as a number. So going back to this loop though, if I actually wanted to loop between zero and 10, there's a built-in feature from Python that's called range. So if I do four x in range zero to 10, and then print out x, I should see something here. And what do I got? I have the numbers zero to nine. So just like we saw before with those iterations or the index points from a list, when you loop through a range, it's gonna start at whatever number you have here, and then it's gonna go to every number up to this number here, okay? So that is some basics about loops. And every once in a while you're gonna be like, okay, well, what is it about a loop that I need to actually do? Well, I'll give you a better example. First and foremost, I'll say user one equals to, I'll give a username and I'll say jmitchell3, and then I'll give an ID of one. And then user two, I'll give a username of ABC and an ID of two. So those are actual numbers. Okay, so now I have two users. So I'll go ahead and say my users equals to this list, user one and user two. So I can say four and we can iterate through this. So for user in my users. Now remember, I, I wanted the variable name here to be a little bit closer to something that I would actually end up using. This is a lot more understandable as to what's going on here just by looking at it. At a glance, it's saying for each user in my list of users, let's go ahead and print out what that value is. And it prints out the dictionary value, which is pretty cool. So it's starting to show me some things that might be pretty useful for actually looping through things. So let's go ahead and loop through it again this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out a key from the dictionary that's in there. So I'm gonna print out user username and that's gonna print out from the user dictionary, it's gonna print out the username. Now you're, you might be wondering what's going on here exactly. I'll, I'll back it up and talk about it in just a second. But we hit enter, we've got the two different usernames here, right? Now the reason that this works is because First of all, we set a variable equal to a dictionary. That dictionary has key value pairs. And then we set a, another variable to another dictionary with the same keys as the previous one. They have the same keys. They don't have the same values for those keys, but they do have the same keys. So then I put both of these things into a list. So it's like a lot more structured now, right? I know that in this list, each item in this list has a username key. Each item in this list also has an ID key. And that way I can feel confident that when I loop through it, I'm gonna loop through this list and user one is a dictionary. Therefore I know that this iteration is also a dictionary 
and then therefore I can make this leap as well. Now, that's cool, but what if you actually don't have the key in that iteration? What if you went and said user, let's say for instance, email, right? Which is a logical thing to ha for a user to have. And I hit enter in here, I get that key error again. Now remembering back to dictionaries, that just means that that key does not exist in that dictionary. So what do we do here? How do we actually approach this? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna scroll back up to user two, and I'm actually gonna give user two an email, right? And I'll just say abc at abc.abc. That's obviously a fake email. Now, going back to that, my users, I'm gonna also redeclare that one because let's go ahead and say print my users. And notice that since I changed only this variable, my users, that list did not change. So I definitely want to reactivate that. So I can actually select it and do copy and paste, which is Command C, Command V if you're on a Mac and Control C and Control V if you're on a Windows, or you can just press up a few times and then hit enter. And now if I print out my users, the data is actually updated. So what we need to do then is loop through this again and see what user actually has email. So let's try that again, the loop with four user and my users. And then we're gonna go ahead and print out the user email. I still get this key error. What's going on here? Well, it's still looping through everything in this list as you might expect, right? So here's the final list that I have. And while it loops through that, the very first iteration of that list is gonna be this one. That one does not have the key of email. What am I to do? Well. This is when we use conditionals. A conditional statement is a true false statement, which we'll go into a lot more detail in a little bit, but this is where it can be useful in a for loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and say for user in my users, then I'll say if, this is the condition, if email and user, then we'll print out user email. Okay, so another concept that's happening here, a couple of them. One of them is we're looping through all of the users there. And then for every user that has email as a key inside of it, it's gonna go ahead and print out what that email is. Notice that I had to indent again, right? So every time you create some sort of block, whether it's a for loop, a while loop, or an if statement, you're gonna have to bring it in a little bit more, right? You just have to indent a little bit more. If you don't indent, you will see an error. And by all means, try that out. Try and see what that indentation error is, uh, but it's gonna be exactly like what we saw um, a little bit before. It's gonna be much like this indentation error or probably more specifically like this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit enter here. And what do you know? It only shows the user that has that value in their dictionary. So this is a for loop. For loops are used all the time and we'll definitely use them a lot more throughout this series. Now, when you loop things, you can loop within a loop. You don't actually have to just loop one time. Um, you can loop within a loop, within a loop, within a loop. Now, do I recommend doing that? Not necessarily, but the idea is that you can loop data at any time. It doesn't matter when you do it. You can add different features within that loop to make sure you're getting the data that you want to get. A good example of this is like, I wanna get the user that has an ID of two. So I'm gonna go ahead and say selected user equals to, I'm gonna put it equal to an empty dictionary right now, right? So I wanna select the user with an ID of two. So I'll say my user lookup equals to two. Now what I wanna do is I need to loop through all of these items in this list. I need to find the user with an ID of two or whatever that my user lookup is. And then I want to set my selected user variable with that uh, found user. So let's try it out. So I'll go ahead and say for user in my users and then give some spaces. We'll say if, well now I can say if ID in user and then space some more, then I can say if user 
and grabbing this key value pair here, and then we'll say equals equals my user lookup. Then I'm gonna go ahead and sol set selected user equals to user. We hit enter a couple more times, and now I'm gonna go ahead and print out selected user. And there you go, the correct user was selected. Now, the important thing here is that we created a for loop and then we did an if statement and then another if statement within that, right? It wasn't fully necessary to do these two blocks of if statements because I already know that all of my users in this list have an ID, but in the off chance they didn't, I just added this condition that if they don't have it, then it's just gonna continue on going to the next iteration, right? And that's what these conditionals allow us to do is no matter what, it's going through that iteration, but when we put a condition in there, it can actually sort of stop the iteration in its track, check all the conditions that it may actually agree with, and then set something. Don't get me wrong, we will be going through a lot more of these conditions very soon, but what we see here is something like this. This statement turns out to be true some of the time. It's not always true, it's only true some of the time. And that's because I know I had this fact that my user lookup was two and the other username had an ID of two. In other words, this condition will only happen one time in this particular data. But you could imagine if I accidentally had many users with the same ID, this is not gonna be a great way to find that selected user. But that's okay, because this is all about getting incremental steps towards understanding how these looping operations work, right? So another way to do this is to loop through numbers. So if I said for x in range, zero to 10, I could then say print x, right? So I get all of those numbers. And now I'm gonna keep on doing that for x in range. Now I'll go ahead and again say for user in my users. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finally say if user ID equals to x, then we're gonna go ahead and print out that user, okay? and it only prints out two users. We had not, uh, 10 numbers showing up here, but only two users are actually printed out. And this is how you do a loop within a loop within a condition as well. So that's it for iterations and for loops. There is another kind of loop that we'll talk about when we get to conditionals. It's called a while loop, and that has to deal with actual conditions like a true false value. All right, so that's it for day four. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you soon.